Hey, what's up? My name's Cameron Doherty, and I'm really excited to share this with you. This is the Keychron B6 Pro, and it's a bit of a game changer. This keyboard is taking dead aim at the Logitech MX Keys, which is a keyboard that I have loved for years, and it's doing so at a fraction of the price. The well-known MX Keys retails for $110. Even Logitech's new, cheaper ultra low profile keyboard called the Signature Slim K950 costs $80. This Keychron B6 Pro retails for just 45 bucks. This puts it in the bargain bin for pricing, but somehow matches the look and many of the specs of the higher end Logitech models. With that big of a price difference though, there's gotta be trade-offs, right? Let's find out. The B6 Pro is strikingly similar to the MX Keys. It's ultra low profile with laptop style chiclet keys. It comes in two colors, space gray, which I have here, which is a two-tone design and their best imitation of Logitech's graphite color. And there's also an ivory white, which goes in its own direction and comes out a little too sterile and monochromatic for me personally. On the box that arrived, there's also a mint green and gold version pictured which Keychron did confirm via email would only be available from certain authorized retailers. After some additional searching, I found Keychron's Thailand site, which showed these colors as well as a pink version. So you may not be able to get them, but they do exist somewhere. From a size perspective, the Keychron is almost identical to the MX keys. And if you held them up and just looked quickly, you'd probably insist they were the same. There are a few minute differences, which I'll highlight quickly. From top to bottom, the key area on the Keychron is slightly larger due to a full height function row. However, by having a smaller forehead above the keys, the overall keyboard length is actually slightly less. From side to side, the width is also slightly smaller on the Keychron. In this case, it's due to there being less space around the arrow keys. Finally, there's height which is probably the only one of these differences that you'll actually notice. The typing angle on the Keychron is very low, around three degrees, and it's a good bit lower than the MX Keys, which comes in at five degrees. There are also no adjustable feet, meaning that ergonomics can be a bit of a challenge. It's definitely usable, but it could be much more comfortable with just a few more degrees of loft. I'd love to see some pop-out feet on a V2 perhaps. The rest of the keyboard is made of ABS plastic, which feels cheaper than the MX keys, but fine overall. It's more on par with the less expensive K950 in terms of materials. Overall though, the design is clean, super thin, and shockingly comparable to the much more expensive Logitech models. Moving on to typing experience, I had high expectations. Keychron has long been a powerhouse in the mechanical keyboard space with very solid offerings that often type very well. They're also known for having good value, which you may already be picking up is the case here. Now to the best of my knowledge, this keyboard is the first keyboard that Keychron has made, which is not a mechanical keyboard. Instead, it features scissor switches and the chiclet style keycaps, which make it similar to a laptop. Typing on the B6 Pro as a result is nearly silent. Let's give it a listen. The sound is truly crazy, almost as crazy as if you're enjoying this video but aren't yet subscribed. Even when typing hard on this keyboard, it's incredibly muted. It's perfect for a stealth setup or an environment where you need to stay as quiet as possible. The key switches have a springiness to them that doesn't exist on either one of the Logitech models, and actually I quite like it. It's subtle, but it feels just like a gentle push upward at the end of each keystroke. It feels a little odd at first, but it winds up being quite nice after a bit of use. 
The keycaps, again, tried their best to match that of the MX keys. They are technically concave, but the dip is so slight that it's almost imperceptible to the touch. If I couldn't see the circular design visually, I would assume that they were flat. If a V2 of this comes, I'd love to see a deeper dip on the keys, since that's one of the top features for me when typing on the MX keys. Outside of that, the keys feel nice. They have a slight texture, but are still relatively soft to the touch. It feels impressively premium, especially at this price point. Perhaps the best example of the typing quality is a story from testing. Now, I've had all three of these keyboards on and off my desk over the last several weeks. Initially, it was for my K950 review, which you can find linked in the description, and now for this review. And for background, the MX Keys is one of my favorite keyboards of all time. It's the keyboard that sort of started it all, as it was one of my very first keyboard reviews, and it was the keyboard that I was using even before I decided to start this YouTube channel. AKA, me and the keys go way back. Now, toward the end of my testing of the Keychron, I was taking notes for my script when suddenly I thought, oh shoot, I'm still using the MX Keys, where did I put the Keychron? only to notice that the MX Keys was on my desk next to me and I'd been using the Keychron all along. I think honestly that this is the ultimate compliment that this keyboard can receive. And while I still give a slight edge to the keys when comparing them directly side by side, the fact that it was able to trick me, even for a brief moment, means that it's a solid keyboard. Moving to functionality and features, the key layout is as excellent as the MX Keys. Since it's basically a carbon copy, it does carry forward the right function button and the oversized escape key, both of which I'm not a fan of personally. Otherwise, everything is great and there's just a few small changes. Rather than having dedicated buttons for switching between Bluetooth connections, they instead use function combined with one, two, and three, which has really become the standard for most mechanical keyboard brands at this point in time. The next change applies just to the mini version, the B1 Pro, which also has the function button on the right side of the board. In this case, it's a difference compared to the MX Keys Mini, which squeezed it in over on the left side of the board. Finally, we have the function row. The function row, as I mentioned, is taller with full-size keys rather than half keys, but it's otherwise very similar and uses almost an exact match to the standard Mac layout. Compared to what you'll find on a Mac, Keychron adds buttons for launchpad and to lock your screen, and it removes do not disturb and the microphone mute. If any of these don't suit your needs, it is also compatible with a software called Keychron Launcher, which is a web-based app that allows you to remap keys, including the use of custom macros. Pretty solid. One highly specific item missing from the Keychron is a visible function lock printed on one of the keys. However, you can toggle it on and off using a combination of function, X, and L. You hold that for three seconds and it'll swap between having function lock on or off. Once again, in V2, I think putting it on the escape key like Logitech does or somewhere else subtle would be preferred. Next up is perhaps the biggest drawback of the Keychron. It has no backlighting. The MX Keys has incredible backlighting, with a sensor that turns the lights on as you approach. It's like magic. The K950 is similar to the Keychron, abandoning backlighting to save some money. Only you can decide whether this matters for your use cases, but for some it will definitely be a deal breaker. For compatibility, the B6 Pro works with Mac, Windows, and Linux, and it has excellent connectivity. It can utilize a full wired mode, which notably neither of the Logitech models can, as well as connecting three devices via Bluetooth and one via the included USB receiver, which on top of that has 1000 Hertz polling. I don't think that many people are gonna buy this keyboard specifically for gaming, but it's nice to know that you could get that polling rate if you decided that ultra low profile was your gaming keyboard form factor of choice. For power, it has a rechargeable 800 milliamp hour battery, which is small, but given that there's no backlighting, it's more than capable. Keychron rates it at 1200 hours, which should get you around six months of use between charges, which is more than enough for any normal user. Charging takes place via USB-C on the back. Also around the back, you can see switches to go between Mac and Windows, 
as well as the power switch, which goes between Bluetooth, USB receiver, and off, which is also for wired connections. Included in the box is a USB-C to USB-C cable. The cable quality is basic, but the fact that it's C to C instead of A to C is nice to see. Do you see what I did there? The vast majority of manufacturers are still shipping A to C cables, which can be particularly annoying if you're a Mac user who hasn't natively had access to a USB-A port in years. Luckily, if you do need USB-A access, they also include a C to A adapter in the box. This type of setup is what all keyboard manufacturers should be doing right now. Also in the box is a bit of a unique feature. It's a protective silicon skin. I personally hate it because it makes the keyboard feel super weird, but if you're in a very dusty environment or some other situation where there's gonna be some kind of debris or crumbs or whatever, if those are gonna be common, it's useful to keep the keyboard clean. And this is especially important when you're talking about these ultra low profile keyboards in which cleaning is typically not an easy task. So if you can keep them clean, you should try to. Finally, let's discuss pricing. Now, when we begin thinking about value and pricing, we have to reconcile with the fact that Logitech has been the king of this category. They just introduced this new cheaper alternative to their incredibly successful MX keys, which has created a new decision point when shopping for an ultra low profile keyboard. Now, all of a sudden, Keychron comes bursting in like the Kool-Aid man at nearly half the price. The full-size B6 Pro is just $45, and the smaller B1 Pro is just $40. Now, keep in mind, you should expect a small shipping charge on top of those prices, but even with that, you're still coming in substantially cheaper than the Logitech options. With that price, you maintain an excellent, though non-mechanical, typing experience, you have essentially a carbon copy of the design and styling. You add high polling rates and a full wired mode. And the only real things that you lose are a little bit of typing angle and backlighting. It's hard to say that this isn't a super compelling purchase and possibly the best productivity keyboard for under $50. Now, if you want to pick one up, there is an affiliate link in the video description to do so. And if you enjoyed this review, then why not check out my deep dive into the K950 from Logitech to see the full details on that option. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.